Okay, I see it. There it is, Scotland House. 8826 Woodstock Road. Here we are. Aging is not something we talk about gladly. Shakespeare's character Jacques describes life as a play in seven acts, the last scene of which is second childishness and mere oblivion, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. So I was a little hesitant to enter the Scotland house, a so-called adult daycare. But in the same play, old Adam is the personification of wisdom. So I was equally curious to meet the people that make up this Upper Valley healthcare facility. I've uh, never been to the Scotland, Scotland House before. It's an adult daycare center, so I really don't know what to think. I'm a little bit intimidated. Let's try. So. Simeon, it's great to see you. Hi, come on Eric. in. Thanks. Please come in. That wasn't in. so bad, was it? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, honey. Well, that's a new one. What? <laughs> it's not new. I was a computer programmer for years, but, um, and that's not saying what I did because I didn't do programming for quite a while until we went to Java. And then I had to relearn that, but I started out on the, um, early cards. equipment. Yeah, she, she's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've seen a lot of reiteration, relearn. Oh, that's the toughest part. Of just relearning life events that you thought you were going to. Oh, I got this down until you turn the next page next year. Well, we got to change and relearn something. So we're re relearning um, older age, I guess. So. I first met Judy. Um, back when her husband inquired, she was referred through a community care coordinator, just needing a little more socialization, needed to just get out of her house, um, a place where her husband could bring her so that he could feel that she was safe, so he could still go do his errands that he needed to do. I have Parkinson's, and that's essentially why I'm here, because I need to give Ted a break. He watches me constantly. Um, Vermont, of course, is one of the oldest states. So um, there are a lot of people living at home with, um, with full-time caregivers that, that do need these kinds of services. Um, unfortunately, I think um, a lot of people don't realize that, that this kind of service is available. So, you know, that's one of the things that we're trying to do here is, is all the time is make sure we're getting that message out so that people are aware um, that they know um, who to, you know, who to go to. Um, they can go to their Council on Aging, either Senior Solutions or Central Vermont Council on Aging. So we try to get that message out as well um, so that folks that do need the service find out about it, know how to contact us, and, um, you know, are able to do so. But, yeah, it's uh, definitely there are um, many, many people in our area that could use adult day. I felt that it was very restrictive for Ted, and now he has a lot more freedom because he can leave me here, well, really on any given day. It just gives me some flexibility. In here, we bring her in, and I turn her loose to the people in here, and they take extremely good care of her. She's definitely a lot more active, more social. Um, she's definitely just, I think, physically is walking better. She's not as much of a fall risk at home like she was. So I think she's definitely improved in those physical, you know, areas that her husband did have concerns with. Uh, I was speaking with Eric before, and he said, you know, most people, they really don't look ahead. So tell us, what do you advise other people? I mean, what, what, 
should people do when, when they get in that situation? They should look for help. Professor Desestre, in the United States, we are all the time seeing on the television, for example, advertisements that sell us a vitamin that says uh, this vitamin will make your brain healthy. What do you recommend for people to keep their brain healthy? What's a healthy lifestyle for the brain? I think that it's uh, it's too late when you are older to uh, when you are old to. Uh, to take care of your brain, you you need to have a really imbalanced uh, life with uh, a physical activity, exercise. Physical activity is necessary to uh, prevent your brain from a disease. A good quality of uh, sleep. Sleep is really important, and uh, an active way of life. Um, that means for me. Uh, uh, cognitive intellectual activities are really important. Social activities are really important. And uh, pleasure uh, is really also important. And you have to prevent, um, to, to, to take care of your mood because uh, aging is really difficult. It's the uh, worst things to do in your life, aging. And, um, and you have... Uh, uh, to, to, to be really cautious about uh, mood disorders. And sometimes some pills are necessary, uh, but uh, not uh, always. As a, a neurologist, the first thing uh, when we see a patient with uh, an abnormal um, aging, uh, it's just to take care of, uh, of his mood and to, uh, to send him to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You're, you're saying that just with a little bit of medication, that abnormal aging will suddenly become normal again, just because that mood. Yeah, for uh, uh, an old people, it's not so easy to accept to be uh, to be affected by aging, and um, sometimes they say that it's normal. I'm sad, but aging is sad, so it's normal. But uh, it's a vicious circle, you know, and uh, it's not normal to be sad uh when uh, you get older it's not normal uh, you have to be happy <laughs> once again we go back to uh the main message which is see a medical professional don't listen yeah. to the commercial on the television yeah no. yes it is a, the basics uh, is to uh to 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 see a, a physician with a diploma <laughs> Social isolation leads to loneliness. Loneliness is a risk factor for depression. Depression can also cause cognitive issues. So it's kind of this, this domino effect. We have medications today that are very, very safe um, for older adults to take and highly effective um, in terms of, of their mood. Depression can sometimes look like dementia. So it's important for somebody, anybody who has any cognitive issues to 
make sure that they are seeing somebody who is ruling out depression, ruling out other uh, uh, other things that could actually be corrected. Right. Um, Hearing loss. Yeah. One of the things that we know for sure is that older adults who are uh, achieving their personal goals, whether it's living at home, are people who move around. Many of us wear Fitbits and try to get our 10,000 steps a day. But for older adults, one of the things that I really, really encourage cool. is, is for them to keep moving around. Uh, and that really helps to keep them functional. We're all aging, and so um, thinking about how to care for seniors is really caring for yourself. Many middle-aged people are in what's called the sandwich um, generation, which is they're caring for children and grandchildren and also caring for aging parents. People come to the Aging Resource Center and they just say, you know, my older parents, um, they may have cognitive issues, they may be living home and they may need home care. Where do I start? And we would help them make small steps, make these community resource um, connections. We work very hard at making a warm handoff so we don't just give someone a telephone number. We make sure that they actually connect with people and that they get their answers. And then we will walk with them wherever the journey goes and at the same time that we hope that they will be taking care of themselves, putting their own advanced directives in place. And um, so we would do a lot of caring for the caregiver as well. One thing that Lori does is she prepares a beautiful newsletter that goes out once a week. And that newsletter includes kind of current updates, but all of the programs that we have going on that week. So somebody may not feel they need services now, but somebody might look and say, oh, they have poetry classes. Oh, they have a, a Zentangle class. So it might spark some interest for somebody. So I would say reach out, get on the mailing list, and uh, come in and visit us. What incredible resources for those of us living in the Upper Valley. They must be really expensive, right? All services through the Aging Resource Center are completely free of charge and no referrals are needed. And the Scotland House Adult Daycare? About three of four seniors attending the Scotland House don't pay even one cent out of pocket. I can remember being four and my grandfather had diabetes and was bed bound in our living room, um, watching my gram take care of him because she was a nurse. And just, I think I kind of grew up in that where we care for our elders and I think when my gram had her stroke that's when I really was a pivot moment for me of like this is what I want to do is take care of people and um, you know seniors have always just had that special place in my heart so it's just mm -hmm. yeah and I think adult day allows me to fulfill that it is just about making people happy and making sure that they're still feeling like they have a sense of purpose at the end of the day. Tanya, should uh, seniors uh, feel good as they look into the future? I think they should. I mean, just because you're aging doesn't mean that life can't still be fun. So mm. that's what we're here for. Mm. <laughs> tomorrow is Wednesday, Wednesday, so I will go to Bones tomorrow. Friday, I'll go to boxing. Thursday, I travel Could come back to here. Keen or I come back here. This year, we'll keep working on the th Three Seasons room. We don't plan on finishing anything on a schedule. Everything, it, well, she would love to finish things on a schedule. <laughs> but I just, just now we'll do as much as we can today. And have a cool beverage at the end of the day and relax. And we didn't finish, but that's okay. It's, it's gonna be just okay, our life. <laughs>